In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice doing linear regression with our calculator. Example A. The following table consists of the marks achieved by nine students on chemistry and math tests. Create a scatter plot for the data with your calculator. Okay, so to create the scatter plot, we are going to go into stat and edit. And we need to fill in this information in list one and list two. I still have information in here from before, so I'll clear that out. And then I'll be able to enter in this new information. I'll make chemistry marks my list one and math marks list two. So for chemistry marks, I'll start by typing in 49 and then 46. and so on until I've entered in everything up to H. I don't want to enter an I because I don't know a corresponding value for 53, so I only want to enter in data where I know both values. Once I've done the chemistry marks, I can go over to list two and enter in the math marks. Once I have all my data entered in, I can go into stat plot, which you get to by pushing second y equals, and you want to make sure that you have plot one on and set to the right thing, which is the scatter plot. Right now I can see it is on and it's set to scatter plot for list one and list two, so we're good. But if you were to click that, you can see in here, you want to make sure it's selected to on so that the on button is flashing. And the first scatter plot here, we don't want, you know, a histogram or bar graph or anything else. Uh, and make sure list one and list two are our X and Y. And then you can go into graph to see your scatter plot. So click graph. And there is our scatter plot. Notice that we can see our points. If we want to see the exact points, you can push trace, and that will let you uh, see the exact points. So this little highlighted one right there is the 49.29 point, which was the first one, A. And we can move around, just pushing those arrows to see the other points as well. So that's how you can create the scatter plot. Now let's go to example B. Draw a line of best fit for the data that you plotted in example A. Use the line of best fit to calculate the predicted value for student I's math test mark. All right, so to make the line of best fit, you're going to go into stat again, but scroll over to calc and hit four for linear regression. Now you want to make sure we have list one and list two highlighted because those are where our variables are and they are so that's good so we can scroll down to calculate and select enter. And here we have y equals ax plus b, a is 1.3 and b is negative 35.3 approximately. So that gives us our equation for our line of best fit. So the equation is y equals a, which is about 1.3x, plus b, and b is negative 35.3, so minus 35.3. So that's the equation for the line of best fit. Now I can enter in that equation, click y equals, and type in my equation 1.3x minus 35.3, enter and click graph, and I should see both the scatter plot and now also the line of best fit. Now it says, use the line of best fit to calculate the predicted value for student I's math test mark. So let's remind ourselves what student I had for chemistry. If we go back up here, student I had a 53 in chemistry, and we're trying to figure out what they would have had in math. Okay, so we know that x equals 53 and we're trying to figure out what does y equal. So a quick way to do this would be to just plug in 53 for x in our equation and calculate y. So I know that y will equal 1.3 times 53 minus 35.3. And of course this is just a 
guess based on the data we have. We don't know for sure what student I would have gotten, but based on how that student did and how all the other students did with chemistry compared to math, this is what we would guess. And now we can calculate this and we get that y equals 33.6. So we would have expected student I to get about 33 or 34 on their math test. Example C, determine the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination for the linear regression equation you found in example B. Is the linear regression equation a good fit for the data? So the correlation, correlation coefficient is noted by an R and the coefficient of determination is just R squared. And the closer to one that our correlation coefficient is or our coefficient of determination, then the better the fit of the line. So we can go back to our home screen where we had our linear regression where we figured out the equation and we can see the values here for R squared and for R. Now R is a positive value because there's a positive correlation for this data with the line had a positive slope. If the line had a negative slope, then the correlation coefficient would be negative. Notice that this correlation coefficient R, which is about 0.95, is really pretty close to one and R squared is about 0.9. Um, so I would say that this is a pretty good fit. I mean, there's not a specific way to answer the question, is it a good fit? But the number is pretty close to one, so I would say it's a pretty good fit. If we had gotten a number like R equals 0.3 or R equals 0.5, then we would say that's not really the best fit and it probably wouldn't be as useful in helping us to predict values like we did for student I.